Cool. Okay, that was quick. Um, I have a lot of slides, but I promise you I'll be done in five minutes because I'm going to time myself. <laughs> um, right. Um, I'm Claudio, so the introduction is done. That's awesome. Um, I'm talking about Terraform. Terraform <coughs> is a uh, software package. Um, it is uh, a tool that <coughs> allows you to describe your, co uh, your infrastructure in code. Uh, it, is not, uh, it does not help you um, say, I mean, it supports different infrastructure providers, cloud providers, but it does not allow you to like seamlessly switch from one to the other. That's not its purpose. Although it can make it easier if you, if you feel like doing that. Um, it's, it's like not an AWS technology. It's uh, uh, by the guys who also do Vagrant, in case any of you know that. They have some other stuff as well. It integrates with that stuff. Um, I think a, a sort of equivalent AWS service would be a cloud formation. Um, I found that a bit more complicated. I don't really have a lot of experience with cloud formation. So um, <coughs> the way it works is you create in your project directory, you create uh, as many files as you feel like you need um, with a .tf extension. You describe your infrastructure in those. And then you run Terraform Apply, and Terraform will uh, look at what you already have, uh, how your infrastructure looks, how your infrastructure described in your code uh, um, has changed since the, last, um, since the last time you applied, and will uh, implement those changes. Um, so for the building blocks, uh, there are variables. You can put them also in, in Terraform files. Uh, you can. Uh, Override them using the command line, or you can, like, say, create environment, uh, environment specific um, configuration files. So you have a production development environment. So you create files and then invoke Terraform apply, referring to a specific, uh, specific configuration file. Um, and then you have the providers, uh, which, as you can see, there are many. Um, these, uh, a provider is a, a collection of um, resource types that you can use. Uh, I'm going to talk about the AWS provider mainly because that seems most relevant right now. Um, but as you can see, you can do um, DigitalOcean, uh, Microsoft Azure, um, Google Cloud, etc., all that stuff. So uh, providers usually have a configuration. Um, in that case, for AWS, you can you can set your access credentials and the region. Um, here, as an example, the region is using a variable. I mean, you can just put it in like that as well. But uh, right, uh, so the AWS provider has uh, a lot of resource types, and uh, that will probably be the longest slide of the presentation. <laughs> I think it's timed at like 20 seconds. So. so these are all the different resources. You probably recognize some of them when you, if you've been using AWS. Uh, it's a lot. Cool, two minutes left. Okay. Right, so resources have a type and they have a name, and you give them the name, right? And they have arguments, um, stuff that you specify. And uh, attributes, in the end, like once they are done, they have attributes, like for example, in an EC2 instance, it will have an IP after, you, uh, after it's, it's been created. And you can use these attributes as arguments for other resources. So you have like a dependency graph in the end um, and, and hook it all up. As an example, um, this is a uh, EC2 instance, the top one, and on the bottom there is uh, this one creates uh, a machine image based on the EC2 instance. So it launches an EC2 instance. Uh, once it's uh, once that instance is up, it will execute the local shell script that provisions the EC2 instance, and then will create an AMI from that uh, from that instance with a specific name. Now you can take this AMI and put it into an AWS launch configuration, which I name your front end, and you can see it references the uh, AWS AMI from instance uh, dot front end. Uh, it references that ID. So the AMI has already been created. Now it creates the launch configuration. From the launch configuration, you can create an auto scaling group. There's some other dependencies. You see um, there's a, an ELB in there for the auto scaling group, for example. Um, and like instance profiles, all that stuff. I didn't put all the code in here because I only have 27 seconds left. And then in the end for this one, for example, this is a nice little uh, auto scaling configuration. Um, in the end you add a record in your DNS that points at the load balancer that you created. 
Right, um, and then you run Terraform Apply and it does that. Um, you can also invalidate a specific resource um, if, you, if, you have, if you've done some manual changes and you want to like redo it. Um, and, it okay, that's my time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just finish this one really quick. Um, it stores your state in a, in a local file. You need to keep that around. Um, the, this is basically, um, it refers to your to the instances you configure or the, the resources you configure. Once it creates them on AWS, it has to know um, how to address those on AWS. So it basically gets um, an ID and stores that in your local state. Uh, if you want to have multiple people working on the same infrastructure project, you should have that state somewhat centralized. Uh, you can use S3, for example, and have um, that state be stored in a bucket. So you can have multiple people, not at the same time, but at least um, sort of like not without, um, um, not with some, um, so the problem is if you, if you commit your state to Git and you have two people doing changes at the same time and then trying to commit it, you can't really merge state files in Git. Uh, that won't work. Right, um, you can do, you can modularize it. Yeah, that's basically it for all that. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. Um, so Sorry, can you speak a bit louder? Most of the infrastructure is called and the different different is using and support of the Yeah. As all these things are supported by the platform is the home that is Yeah, so I would say the main uh, the main difference is probably that uh, it's not AWS specific. So you can have say digital ocean droplet and then create a, a, a route fifty three PNS entry based on that and stuff like that. Uh, I think I think it looks a bit nicer. It's a bit sightier than cloud formation as well. Okay, uh, if you look at the APIs, what uh, AWS provider is very specific to AWS, which means like you know, for the uh, another service provider like Microsoft Azure, so yeah, they'll be having their own APIs. Right? Yes, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not an abstraction there. You can't just port your infrastructure to another cloud provider, but you you can. And well, once you have this definition, they will ideally look somewhat similar, um, and you can you can run them uh, uh, simultaneously. You can have an infrastructure running on all cloud providers at the same time and have them reference each other. I, I guess that would be an, an advantage. Also, probably ease of use. But again, I have limited limited experience in cloud formation. I found it a bit too heavy. So does it come to this one CLI? Yeah, so that's the thing, it's a Terraform command. You have Terraform apply, Terraform plan, all that stuff, very easy. So you can take this back to the local system, or how many provision services? So for now, the, the way I work with it, because it's relatively small scale stuff I do, um, so I have a Git repository with my, with my files, and I just run Terraform locally. You could say run it through a CI, uh, but then you have to be very sure that what you push to the CI actually works. I, I think I prefer trying it out by myself. Um, yeah. Any other questions? So can you have multiple user profiles? Multiple user profiles? Like, like profiles in what sense? Like the access key, like key. Yeah, so you can have uh, multiple. Uh, yeah, so the access keys, you can put it into a file uh, that you don't commit into your repository if you work with multiple people, for example. You don't commit the access keys, probably safe, safe uh, practice anyway. Um, and then you, have, you can have your local access keys in your variable file in your local one. Okay. Yeah? Um, how does it differ with other infrastructure support uh, application like uh, Puppet or Chef? But Puppet and Jeff are different. They are to provision uh, uh, instances mainly, like like servers, right? This is more you describe your infrastructure. You describe uh, I have like a database server. I have a uh, DNS zone. I have a Lambda uh, Lambda stuff, uh, API endpoints and everything. That stuff you can put that into code. Chef mostly the way I use it is really just um, you provision one specific server or multiple servers, but not really the infrastructure as a whole. Uh, they overlap a little bit because you can do a sort of orchestration, like pointing your application servers at your database server, that kind of stuff, sure. That's probably the overlap. Can you also create like, uh, dependencies, like for example, if I'm setting up a, a list of infrastructure, if, if a, one of a server that I cannot set up, or I cannot set up, then it would not 
proceed with the rest of the servers that I want to set up. In this case, you mean? Yeah, yes, for yes, Terraform? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will, if, if you do something wrong or if it, if it, if it can't finish what it's planning to do, it will just go like, sorry, I can't do this, and then you have to fix this up. Uh, that's actually a case where you probably want to have a manual look at your AWS account because it is possible sometimes that it say, creates an EC2 instance and then can't really finish the job and just leaves the instance kind of hanging around without terminating it again. So sometimes you have to clean up after it a little. One last question uh, regarding when, you, when your state changes, because it goes for the desired state, right? Do I have yeah. to keep on applying or it detects that the state has changed and automatically reapplies the changes? Yeah, so basically it, uh, so it, it uses your local state file, which is what, what it, it uh, saves itself, so it, uh, um, where it saves the stuff that it's been doing. It uses that and your code to, to see what has changed and then applies only the changes it needs. The problem is if you lose your state file, for example, which you also should not really commit into your Git repository. If you lose your state file and you run it again, it will create all the stuff again and then you have it twice on your... AWS. So you have to keep the state file around, but if you have that, uh, it will only do whatever it needs to do, uh, like only the delta, basically. Yeah. Cool. Did I mean, it, w it was a bit quick, but did people more or less get what it is about? More or less? I take that as a no. Okay, cool. Um, anything else? Thanks.